Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm gonna be testing the speeds of all the new supercars and sports cars that were added into the game and comparing them to the top sports cars of previous DLCs and previous additions to the game. So that's right, we're gonna be using this test that we've done for many, many updates now that you guys really seem to like. It's basically the 1,000 meter drag test race, and while this only will effectively test, uh, I guess it's acceleration and top speed, it should give you a pretty good idea of how these vehicles stack up compared to some of the older vehicles in the game, and if they're worth it to buy based off of this performance. Now just to clarify a little bit, all the cars in this video have been maxed out as best as they can, with engine and transmission and turbo, lowering the suspension, adding a spoiler when applicable. They've been giving all the upgrades. So let's start with the supercars first. I wanted to race the T21 first, and it's funny because it actually comes in at the fastest time. We're going in this order. So the T20, at least the two races that I did, came in with a time of 21.923 and a second time, which was a little bit quicker, at 21.889. Now, this wasn't unexpected because the T20 is probably still the best overall supercar in the game. And as you'll see at the end of the video, this kind of makes sense too, that it is still the fastest supercar in the game. And as far as overall performance goes, I'm always gonna choose a T20. It seems to be the overall best bet for me. And on this straight line drag test, it still performed the best also. So once again, it had a 21.923 and a 21.889. Now coming into the number two spot was the Banshee 900R. This obviously came in the January 2016 DLC, one of the few Benny's supercar vehicles. And this was close. This was right up there with the T20, but just a little bit slower. So its first time I ran was a 29.955, which was extremely fast. And then I got a second time of 22.090, which was just a little bit slower. So you can see there's only a slight difference between the T20 and the 900R. Really, it's like 0.2 of a second. That's not very fast at all. But in races when literally every inch and every mile per hour counts, it's something like that that can separate the difference. So we obviously know the 900 are just slightly slower than the T20. Now at the number three spot is where we see a slight bit of separation. This is the Osiris. Have you noticed anything yet? We haven't talked about any of the new cars crazy stuff going on here. So the Osiris came in with a first time of 22.324 and a secondary time of 22.191. So again, just slightly slower than the 900R and just a brief bit slower than the T20. But again, you can start to see that separation there, whereas the first two supercars were in the high 21 seconds, and then the Osiris was bouncing to the 22 seconds. Also, if it wasn't clear by now, in these races, I'm not doing the jump start at the beginning, I'm not using the boost, I'm just holding down the trigger until it says go, and then I just take off and I do the race. And I'm doing it twice just in case I get a bad time or just in case I get an overly good time to try and make this the most fair test possible. So now at the number four spot of the vehicles that I tested today, we have our first new car, the Vapid FMJ. And would you believe it? This car is slower than our top three supercars. So its fastest time that I got was 22.525 and I got a secondary time of 22.591. Now, again, when you think about it, it's not that much slower than the Osiris. In fact, it's almost right on par, you know, give or take a few .0 seconds or so. But again, we just see, start to see that separation again, farther and farther and farther from the T20, from the 900R, and from those top tier class supercars. So again, this is one of the brand new vehicles and it seems as if it doesn't quite keep up with the existing cars in the game. And as I said, everything towards the end will make sense once I kind of explain it, but just very interesting that this car doesn't even come close to competing with the T20. In fact, it's edging on almost a full second slower, which is insane. And that's a great segue into our final supercar we're gonna be looking at today, the Picasso Reaper. Man, what 
a letdown, not in terms of its price, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but in terms of the hype that Rockstar provided for this vehicle. Was it based off the Hypersport? Was it based off the Lamborghini Huracan? And it comes in at our slowest supercar today. Uh, the best time I got was 22.892, and the slowest time I got was 22.925, which makes it pretty much a full one second slower than the T20. And you don't think one second is slow until you're traveling at 160 miles an hour. Then it's slow, and you can definitely tell the difference, and you can certainly tell the difference on the test track that I was on today. Okay, so I know you might be saying those results are kind of shocking, but are they really when it actually comes to the price of the vehicles? So if you think about it, the Vapid FMJ was the most expensive supercar of this update at $1.75 million. However, it doesn't make it more expensive than the Osiris or the T20, and when you're fully done upgrading a Banshee 900R, you're likely gonna be somewhere close to that. So when you think about it for the price, you're getting probably an accurate time and an accurate position for where this supercar should ultimately land. Let's jump even further down to the Pegasi Reaper, $1.59 million, cheaper than the Vapid FMJ and cheaper than all the other vehicles we listed. So it makes sense to be on the spot it's at in fifth place based out of those cars. So it's hard to get disappointed when they are priced at that point. Now there are other things I dislike about whether it be the Reaper or the Vapid FMJ, but as far as performance goes, it's pretty on par for what you're getting. So it's hard to complain about those speeds when you're still comparing it to the T20, which is $2.2 million, and the Osiris, which is nearly $2 million. So I think as far as the supercars go, we're right on point. So now let's move on to the sports vehicles. We got one new sports car in this update, and that was the Grati Bestia GTS. I'm not sure how I feel about the Grati Bestia GTS, but I wanted to run it first today. And it came in with some interesting times. The first one I got was 22.958. And when I originally got that time, I was like, okay, you know, this car has some potential. I, you know, it might actually perform pretty well. And then the second time I got was the 23.058. And I slowly from there realized that that would not compete with some of the other sports cars that we were gonna be looking at today. So moving on to the Masakro. Masakro is still the fastest sports car, at least that I ran in this test. The two that I came up with were 22.591 seconds and 22.690 seconds, pretty much smoking the Grati. Now again, it's only about a half second slower, but again, when you're going 140, 150 miles an hour, when you reach that half second to a second point, there is a huge difference in the distance that that is ultimately going to create. So the Masakro was number one, and I'm calling the Grotti and the Jester a tie for second place because the Jester raced a 22.925, and as we recall back to the Grotti, it raced a 22.958. Really, that's too close to call. That could easily be a driving error on my part. You know, I might have just slowly turned to the left at the last second or done something wrong at one little curvature. So I'm not going to call one worse or another just because I'm like that much of a fraction of a second off. And last but not least, we've got the Elegy, which I wanted to just throw in here just because. And the Elegy finished with 23.725, clearly the slowest of the sports cars that we looked at today. Now, unlike our supercars, this is where the pricing thing doesn't really make sense. So the Grati Bestia is $610,000, which is pretty expensive as far as sports cars go. Yet, some of the vehicles that I was racing against that did better, the Masakro is only $270,000, and the regular version of the Jester is only $240,000, making it much less expensive than the Bestia. So, if you are going to be grabbing the Bestia, it's probably due to its newness, or it's probably due to the fact that you really like the Grati brand, or that you like the unique look and the unique style of it, because at the time, performance-wise, I just can't see anything to love about it based off of the price. Now, I know there are slightly more expensive sports cars in the game, like the Verlier, that kind of match up with that price range, but 
at the same rate, you are paying for a more expensive vehicle that cannot match the performance of the Masakro and the Jester alike. So anyways, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys if you are on the fence about purchasing any one of the new vehicles added in the game. These are, I guess, more the performance ones, so that's why I wanted to test these. Uh, I didn't really feel a need to test the new Benefactor you know, SUV or the Windsor Drop. I figured you guys would be most interested in these three vehicles right here and how they stacked up with previous Grand Theft Auto cars. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. If you did go on to enjoy the video, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. Really daily GTA 5 videos like this. Without the way, guys, like I said, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.